Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Revit Pure Live. I am your host, Nicolas Catelier. I am an architect, a BIM specialist, and the founder of the website RevitPure.com. Revit Pure Live is a show where we help you become a better Revit user. Having a glance at the chat, and as usual, we have people from all around the world, from Austria, Argentina, the UK, um, Israel, Switzerland, and New Zealand. So all around the place, always um, good to know and feel free to type into the chat where you are watching the show from. Uh, before moving on uh, with a guest, a couple of things to mention. Um, next week episode of Rapid Pure Live will be with Pervy Irwin. It is the second time that Pervy will come on the show. The first was uh, last year, episode number four, if I'm not mistaken, and she came in to talk about schedules. She gave great advanced tips about schedules in Revit. It was one of my favorite episodes. I've learned a lot. And Pervy is coming back this time to talk about area plans in Revit. Interesting topic. So make sure to catch that one. It's Wednesday, but at 8 p.m., a special evening session. So make sure to grab your drink uh, before joining the show. <clears throat> and quickly before uh, moving on, as always, make sure to have a look at learn.revitpure.com. It's our learning portal where you will find all our courses, including manage, design, uh, basics. And you can also get our new pro template well new it has been released uh, last fall uh, but it has been quite popular it's the result of many years of works and experimentations to fest the to find the best workflows in revit so have a look at that it's at learn.revitpure.com all right so today's guest is making a comeback after being here last fall. And let me bring her on. Hello, Nehama, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing great, thanks, how are you? I'm very good, nice to see you back again. So you are a, a landscape architect based in Israel and you came um, last fall to talk, generally speaking, about landscape in using Revit, especially with the <coughs> environment tool. And it's such a broad topic. The session was very popular. And this time we decided to um, have a second session, but focusing on the specific topic of landscape. Is that right? Yes. Um, today we will uh, take a look about, uh, take a look at topography editing, advanced topography editing, and how you think and design while doing it. So it's going to be very interesting, I hope. All right, <clears throat> yes, I, I think so. And uh, we are trying something new this time. Uh, with the streaming system I use, there is a giveaway system. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, talking with Nehama, we <clears throat> thought it would be interesting to give uh, one year of the environment plugin for somebody to chat. So I will try to activate that and to participate, you will have to type in a command in the chat. Let me just see if that works properly. see still a little lag uh, maybe before since it's setting up um, there you go okay so people in the chat you, s you should see let me try something uh, you should see a little stream lab bots are you seeing that yeah there is so people if you want um, participate in the contest type in the chat exclamation mark raffle type that in the chat and you should be able to get your one year copy of the environment plugin yeah we decided to give gifts this time so it's also very exciting all right trying that <clears throat> There is Streamlabs notification. 
So yeah, instructions, type in the word raffle, but with an exclamation mark before. Hoping it works on my yeah. side. Everybody ruffling. And yeah, additional thing, you must be a subscribers of the YouTube channel for the comment to work. Hoping it works properly. Else I will kind of look like, like an idiot. It should be working, I guess. It's the first time I tried this. So meanwhile, while this is going on, I think uh, we can move on. Um, so can you share your screen, Nehama? Yes. Let me share my screen. All right. Um, so yeah, should I start? Um, so we wanted to speak about topography editing. And this is, as you said, really a broad um, topic. And, you know, it's more of an art form than, you know, an, an accurate science. There are a lot of tools and a lot of ways to do it. So we were thinking what what we what is going to be the best way um, to demonstrate it, but still having it look real. So um, luckily, uh, I had a customer that I had to give him advice. Uh, we had a session, and <clears throat> we chose uh, we chose the, this case study to demonstrate all the tools. Um, and and what we're going to show today, I, I want to show basically the workflow of how to work with a specific project like that. Um, so basically what I have here, let me just show you the cover sheet. What we have here is a part of a very big um, neighborhood planning. And this is basically a preliminary planning. So you can see that the roads only have elevations, you know, at the center mark. And the purpose of this model is to understand, um, you know, the excavation, the cut and fill quantities of these projects, uh, the feasibility of the project, and um, to be able to take it to the next step of um, detailed design. So what we did, uh, we simply cropped a little piece of it. And um, basically, this is the end result. So let's go to a plan view. You can see over here that we have all the lots with property lines. And um, we also have a very nice, um, let me just show you, a very nice schedule that shows us not only the overall uh, cut and fill of the project, but you can see basically the cut and fill calculations of each and every lot. And we're gonna go through um, the entire process of modeling this uh, properly and, um, Hopefully, you guys will enjoy the entire process. So what I did since, uh, you know, there is a lot of work over here, I basically created uh, three files, uh, each of them in a different stage of the modeling. So I will be able to show you, um, you know, parts of the entire process. Um, so uh, first, I have to say that really every project is is different and every country every office has different standards so you know each and every one of you can take um different notes from that um and and you know be flexible with the tools um while you work so of course the first thing uh when you reach this kind of site is to basically model the existing surface right so since we're talking about topography tools today i'm going to state the obvious and let's go over to existing view and right let's do show current face so Stating the obvious, when you have a cut survey, you can simply create a surface by um, selecting an import instance. So the one important thing over here is to just know the cut layers that you wanna create this um, topography from. So 
this is a very important part because once we have an existing topography, whether or not it's demolished, um, then we can know the net cut and fill of this topography. So starting a new file, you know, establishing coordinates and building the existing phase. But also that's something, uh, another thing that I do usually when I start a new project, um, I basically start to analyze, um, you know, the project. So over here, what you can see is um, I, I simply created two analyses, one for slopes and one for elevations using um, environment uh, color analysis tools. And there's a separate tutorial for that. I'm not gonna go through that today, but I think it's a very important step because right away, when you look at these analyses, um, you can get information, you know, so these lots over here are probably gonna be very problematic because they have, um, you know, a very big slope, 20% or something like that. And then you can see the elevation analysis. Uh, I'm sorry if you guys don't like the colors, uh, you can very easily control that from the uh, color analysis command, but you can right away see the overall structure of um, this area and, and receive quick decisions about how are you going to go forward. So, this is the first and very obvious state. Um, now let's move to a new construction phase. And um, let's start with the interesting part. So the first thing I want to do um, in every, every site project is to model and establish my constraint, right? Because in landscape, you always have to refer you to your constraint. So in this specific case, you can see that I have very little information about the roads. The roads is the structure. They're my constraints. I have to relate to them um, when I design um, the area inside. So stating the obvious again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create topo surface from a CSV file created from these points. Um, so here's the CAD file. Uh, you can see that nothing is in a correct elevation, maybe only the text symbols. Um, so I will not go through the entire process of creating a CSV file, but I will throw in a very, very useful tip. So the thing is, um, if you take a look at these te text notes, when the uh, road engineer placed them, he meant that the elevation point will be right here in the middle of this text. Um, but going uh, into Revit, um, you know, extracting the data, this is the point that we're gonna have. So my first, you know, insight tip um, is to just select, oh, sorry for that, select all the texts and move them to be justified to uh, left. And then you can see that we have um, the point located exactly where it was meant to be. So that were, uh, that's where you're gonna go um, forward to data extraction. And again, I'm not gonna go through that, but um, there is a very uh, detailed video about how to extract this CSV file. Um, for those of you that doesn't know, it's a simple Excel table containing X, Y, Z coordinates of every point. So once we have these points, um, we're able to um, create, a, create a surface from a CSV file. But um, there is one problem because Revit has a 20 mile limit. If I use the messing inside topo surface create from import uh, command, let's go to specify point file. And um, let me just go over here and let's go. So, let me just place this file and I'm in shared coordinates. Um, my file has shared coordinates already. So let's go okay. And then you can see that this surface is really not located properly. And one of the things that we can see is, you can see this you know, road is supposed to go over here, which is basically over here. So um, to solve this issue, I'm simply gonna use the same command at the environment tab, that's gonna bypass the 20 mile limit and it's gonna locate it uh, exactly at the correct uh, place. So let's go um, 
surface from file. And again, select the same uh, CSV file. Um, meters, sorry for all Imperial uh, people over here. And now you can see that this topo surface is um, located correctly in place. So again, it depends in the situation, but since this is only a preliminary design, um, this topo surface is not really constructed very well. There's a lot of problems with it. And what I want to do is I basically want to um, enlarge, like stretch my topography without losing any information and fix it a little bit. So I'm going to show you just a um, few examples of how I'm going to do it. So let's start with edit surface. And then what I wanted to do is I want to take all the points over here on the boundary and to just duplicate them and place them over here. So the topography would just cover, you know, the entire road. So the, uh, another tip is that you can just select all these points over here and go to filter and just select only the points on the boundary of the topo surface. This is pretty useful. So once I selected the points on the boundary, I can simply duplicate them to over here. And you can see that um, the um, elevation line, uh, the contour lines remained pretty much the same. So I'm just gonna play around with it a little bit more and then duplicate it to here. So um, this is a very nice way of doing it, just um, selecting the points on the boundary of the surface. And I'm going to do um, the same over here. and over here. Um, now, once I build this topography in the first, uh, the first time before, uh, you know, when I was preparing to this session, I was praying that there will be something extremely wrong with it so I can show how to solve it. Um, so let's take a look at how this uh, topography is laid on top of the geometry of the sidewalks. And you can see that over here, I have an area with a really steep slope, right? So it's not that I'm going to change the design of the roads, but again, since I don't have a lot of information and not a lot of elevation points, then I know that I can actually change the slope and make it a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit less steep and a little bit more going with the direction of the sidewalk. So the process is going to include two phases. The first phase is where I'm going to just do edit topography and just insert all kinds of um, other points. And then I'm going to use one of the environment tools to just smooth it out and you know um, create a really nice slope. So let's start with edit surface and I'm just going to go to wireframe mode so you would be able to see how this topography is laid on top of the um, of the road. And now I'm going to use place point relative to surface. So I'm going to have all kinds of anchors over here and over here because what I want to do is I want to smooth out this entire um, corner and maybe one over here. So once I'm doing it relative to surface, I'm pretty sure that um, you know I would be able to maintain more or less the original design. So now that I inserted these points, I'm going to show you one of uh, environments, one of my favorite tools. Basically, it's insert midpoint. So once I um, select the insert midpoint tool, I will select the topography that I want to edit. And then I have this dialog over here. So before I'm going to show you how, how am I going to use it, I'm going to explain a little bit about this tool. So what this tool is basically doing, um, you know, when you have the, these jittery contour lines with Revit, it's just because Revit builds topographies from elevation points and not from contour lines, even though that's what we see, right? And, and then once he builds it from elevation points, there is this 
strange triangulation where it just guesses how the triangulation is supposed to go. And basically this uh, insert midpoint algorithm knows where exactly you should insert new elevation points in order to smooth out um, the surface. And my recommendation is to really play, play a lot with this tool. And then after playing it with it for a while, it becomes really you know, a helpful tool um, with designing topographies. So let's take a look at how it works. Let's select one point and just make sure that you're on a point when you're selecting it. So one point, and then I'm gonna take the other edge of this arc. So that's another point over here, one second. Yeah. And you can see that I have this slider which controls the shape that I wanna create. So let's give it another, a nice curve. And then you can control the density. So how much elevation points do you wanna insert? Usually you only need the minimum. It really depends on how accurate you wanna be. And again, you have the undo button so you can just, you know, trial and error, right? So let's go insert. And once I insert, I can see immediately how that spreaded the, the lines a little bit more, right? And I'm gonna do the same with the center of the road. Just go select these two points and just stretch, you know, stretch this circle, insert the points and now I'm going to finish and I'm going to do something else. I'm going to go back to edit surface and delete these points because I don't really need them anymore since um, I've already established, you know, the, um, the slope that I needed. And then let's go back to consistent colors and check the slope over here. So you can see that I was able to maintain the same elevations, but to just spread out you know the contour lines and spread out the the slope to be a lot more um, workable so there are pl uh, plenty other uh, places that I could you know fix this topography and I'm not going to do everything right now but um, you can play around with it until you're happy with the result until the result is good enough and again not all of the time you would have to model the roads on your own. It really depends on the situation, but it's extremely important to plan relating to these roles, uh, roads. Um, one really nice tip is if your road engineer works on Civil 3D and he has uh, the roads as a surface, um, you would be able to um, use environment to insert it into the file and then you would not have to model anything. You would just have it as a surface and you would be able to relate to it and use all environment commands uh, with, the in, with the land XML uh, topo surface. So um, the next uh, stage would be, of course, to... Um, just sorry yeah. to uh, briefly interrupt a couple of things. Well, first, that was really interesting, the smoothing the surface. I don't know how many times I had the topo with kind of weird jag lines. That seems totally random. <clears throat> I haven't yet to try mm -hmm. that one yet. Uh, and secondly, for uh, the raffle, for some reason, the, the, the bot says the raffle has been canceled, but actually... Uh, I've managed to, got, um, to get a name, and it is Thomas Surface. So, uh, Thomas Surface, congratulations. Please send, uh, let me share over there. Congrats, Thomas. Yeah, send an email to nick at revitpure.com and to claim your prize, and we'll redirect you to environment uh, to, so you can get your free one-year license. So congratulations to Thomas. Yay. I hope uh, you will enjoy it, Thomas. Um, so let's, uh, yeah, going back to our topography. So the next stage, um, I have to admit, I really hate this part is splitting the surface. So first of all, splitting the surface, the main rule about it is that you can only divide the topography into two parts. So the one thing I always do before splitting a surface is making my topography a lot bigger than what I really needed to do. Because if I would try to um, split it very close to the boundary, it a lot of times it just doesn't work. And then, 
Another nice tip um, when splitting topographies is that if you have a CAD file um, and you use the peak line tool, Revit really doesn't know to read the polyline so well, but if you have hatches, um, then it will work perfectly. So you could just split it using the hatches and then um, you know you can assign different material to each part of, of this road. And with that, uh, please allow me not to do all the splitting right now and to just move um, to the other file, which is the middle of the way. And basically what I did over here, I just split the surface and then I took the sidewalks and I just lift them up 50 cent 15 centimeters above the roads because that's what it usually is. So again, it depends on the situation. Um, it depends on if that's um, for construction documents or for preliminary design, that's up to you. But a very interesting thing is to see the example of what's the difference between using floors for the roads or using topographies. So if this is uh, this model is going for construction documents, you would want to use floors because you need the thickness and the layers and materials of the floor element. So I hope everybody knows already the sheet by topography tool. And if you don't, I will show it later on. But that basically allows you to drape every slab, roof or floor on top of every topography. And it just uh, automates the modify sub element process and places all these elevation points. So let me show you, I use uh, design options to be able to show you um, what would it be like if I, would, if I was using floors. So as you can see, these floors has a lot of elevation points. And if I just uh, move around in my file, it's really heavier. So the thing is that once you use design options, you can have both in the file but it would not affect anything because once you are going to the design option where you have the topography, then everything is very, very smooth and very, very quick. Um, I do think that uh, Autodesk is going to improve the functionality of um, shape edited floors. Um, but at the moment, I think design options is a really, really good um, is a really good option for having both in the file and not, you know, having such a heavy file. So once we have uh, this situation and you can see that I created um, property lines, uh, each property line has, you know, the number of the lot on top of it. And then you're saying, okay, so what do I do now? So the first thing I have to say, and you probably noticed I do not have the existing topography over here at all. I mean, if I would move to um, to existing phase, then um, um, let's do previous post demo, then you would see the existing topography, right? But for um, when I build my proposed uh, stage, so when I build my design, I don't need it. And the reason for that is not because I'm not relating to it or referring to it. It's just that because my design is supposed to go from, you know, here to here. That's where my elevations are going to refer. And I do not need the existing situation for that. Having said that, I did create um, sections that show me the existing topography and I will dive into it a little bit later and show you exactly how to create this section and to be able, um, you know, to, to see throughout the design, to see how uh, your design is relating to the existing topography. But to have a really good starting point to design the lots within this block over here, I, I'm going to use surface from edge and what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to create something like, I call it a starting point surface. So designing topo surfaces, it's always, you know, on, it has stages and 
you're never, you know, with starting with the final topography and, you know, never be shy using few topographies or splitting the topographies and changing each and every one of them, uh, because really that's how the landscape is, is built. So let's think surface from edge. Actually, it's one of my favorite tools. It's very useful. Um, I'm going to show you a few more situations uh, where this tool is going to be useful. You can either edit an existing topography or create a new one. And I'm going to create a new topography that simply goes from you know, one row to another. So let's select the whole edge option and the chain. So it will select you know, chain of, of edges. And you can see that it selected this entire edge. Let's take this one as well. And over here. So that's that's going to be my starting point surface. Let's select this edge as well and this little curve. So as I said before, I'm going to have to split this surface. And if I would split it over here, it would just create a lot of mess. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to use the one point option to just uh, stretch the surface a little bigger than what I actually needed to do, just like I did before. So, you know, the same principles are valid over here as well. So now I have this very, very big surface. It's gonna be very easy to split it. Let's create it and go to messing inside, split surface. And now I'm just gonna be able to simply select all these edges and split the surface. So let's go over here. Um, so I'm going to do something a little bit, you know, not as accurate um, just for the sake of this example, because I've already uh, prepared the accurate uh, surface. One second. So let me just stream it. Let's do one, two, one. Two. So I'm making sure that what I have over here is divided into two pieces. And since I really made it big, then I know that this one is another piece. So let's click to approve and delete this part. So the nice thing about working this way, you know, with stages and not to try to have the complete design at the first place is that this one gives you a lot of information. So for example, I can see the overall slope that I would get over here, how, how difficult this area is going to be. I can already see a basic estimate of my cut and fill analysis, even though it's, it's going to change going forward. So it gives me um, a lot to be able to reference to. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to um, create each um, lot as a building pad. Now I know I want to say that these ones are pretty messy and that's why I really like this example because it's real live. So it, it's a real um, uh, neighborhood that's uh, being established here in Israel. And uh, the messiness is, you know, it's just part of reality. It's not these uh, tiki-taki boxes and uh, neighborhoods. I really like that. Um, so anyway, to understand uh, the overall elevation that I want every lot to have, I would use a building pad. And then um, I would simply select my property lines over here um, to create these building pads. Now, there is one um, very important glitch with building pads. So, Building pads are hosted on a topo surface, right? But building pads are not able, like there's no option to switch hosts. When you, once you created the building pad, it will relate to a specific topo surface and you would have to delete it and recreate it in order for it to relate to another surface. So let me just, um, you know, approve this one. Let me just go to a 3D view and show you the result. Um, so, a really annoying issue that we have with building pads is, you know what, let me create a new one and I would show you this one. So let's go over here, create a building pad. Let's take this lot, for example. And 
Um, okay, never mind. Let's go to 3D view. And you can see that this building pad did not influence my topography at all. It's not even hosted on it. And it's like, it, it's really driving you crazy. You don't know where this building pad belongs to. So the, the secret is that if you created the building pad a little bit outside of the topography, it will automatically try to search for another topography as a host. And um, I have, let's turn on a visibility graphics. I have another surface here that I used to create my roads as a help surface. And even though it was hidden in my view, um, this building pad, let me, oh, let me show you once again. This building pad is actually um, relating to this surface. I did not want that at all. So how can I avoid this situation? Um, let me just delete this building pad. So the first, uh, the first thing you have to do to avoid this situation is to sketch the building pad entirely within the surface, which means that over here, I gave it a small offset just to make sure that it's inside the, topo the to topography. But another way of avoiding it, and that's kind of a workaround, but currently it works really well, is to simply, um, to simply take the surface that's disturbing you at the moment and change the phase of the surface to a previous phase. So that's the only way um, that the building pad would not be able to recognize and be hosted on this surface. So what I did is I just changed the phase and then I brought it back to where it's supposed to be. So that's a little bit of a workaround, but um, you know that's something that you really have to know when you're dealing with building pads. Other than that, I really like building pads. They're very efficient and if we go ahead and move to the, um, to the finished file over here, what's nice about these building pads is that they basically create like separate, um, separate topographies. Let's just go on a tab. So you can see it's a separate topography and then each topography can give me the cut and fill data of each and every, um, every lot. So, other than the fact that you have everything in 3D and that really allows you to understand your design. And, you know, I can see that I have really high walls over here. I don't really like it. I would probably, you know, go on and, and play a little bit with the way that these are laid um, on top of the topography. But you can also, again, go to the schedule and say, all right, so I see that over here I have a fill, but I don't have a cut. So maybe, um, you know, this lot over here is not so balanced. Maybe I have to move it a little bit. And, and then the nice thing about it, um, I, I wish I hadn't read it, you know, when I uh, planned these huge neighborhoods uh, with hundreds of lots uh, on AutoCAD on 2D. And I would really, you know, you, you always miss something. So when you have that, you can play around freely, you know, with your design and just see how the cut and feel um, areas are changing. So um, you simply just go to a building pad, uh, change the elevation, right? And then you can go ahead and see how your cut and fill, your net cut and fill has changed. So Revit has proven to be a very efficient tool um, with these situations. Um, All right. Uh... I didn't know about the disuse of, of building pads. That's pretty smart because honestly, I didn't like building pads that much. I always had trouble with them, but using them this way uh, for area, pretty smart. I'll have to try it for sure. Yeah, and... they can be really problematic, but mm -hmm. as long as you remember the rules, right? Sh sure. Um, yeah, I wanted to, well, first Tom Wilkins asked as a question about the environment plugin. It's true that perhaps we didn't introduce them. We kind of assumed that uh, people uh, wouldn't know about it. Right. Uh, but quickly, uh, let me get URL. I'll briefly show it on screen so people 
I can know. So it's archintelligence.com and people can get a free trial. How long is the trial again? It's pretty long, uh, right? So it's, um, yeah, it's about 60 days right now. It's 60 days. And um, I don't know if it will remain like that, but go ahead and download it as long as it is uh, 60 days. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a free trial. You have the full version, all the tools um, for the free trial version. And just like any other Revit feature, if, you, if you're not sure what this feature does, just uh, feel free to click F1 and then you will reach our website. We have, uh, we try to keep a pretty elaborate um, uh, user guide and you have YouTubes um, showing the different features. So yeah, definitely. Uh, all right, we also got a couple of interesting questions. Uh, Scour DX ask about creating topo. Uh, when I generate topo, I get a huge dip like valley. Does the environment has ability to detect those false points and delete them? Um, I'm not sure I really understand the I, question. I guess I, I, I kind of do sometimes when create a topo, suddenly there's kind of a hole, like random holes creating themselves. Uh, do you think that the, the smooth surface tool could help with that? Definitely I do, mm -hmm. um, but I would advise uh, before using the smooth surface, just realizing where is the area that you mm -hmm. want to smooth and then maybe uh, go to edit surface and just delete a few of the extra points. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be pretty good advice. And um, about the property line. Mm -hmm. uh, I chose on plans, but never on the election, uh, elevation or sections. Does environment has a tool for that? I think so, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I was actually about to show you my Okay, section. well, if it's in your plan. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's, a, that's a really good question. Uh -huh. so, um, so two things about section views. Uh, if we go over to existing phase and... Um, what I want to do is I want to be able to um, show the topography, the, the existing topography and relate to it. But the thing is that with Revit, you cannot show spot elevations on topographies, right? So let me just delete this one. We have a tool uh, surface profile. So you're just able to select every topography. You can select more than one click finish, select a specific line style from your model and have this line exactly on the surface profile. And now we can go again to the new construction phase. And then we have the existing surface profile on top of our section. We can show the, um, the elevation in every point. And if you uh, update the topography that this line is linked to, then the line will change with it. And same goes here. You can use the property line projection tool. I will not use it again because it's already in this view, but it automatically, um, it lets you select whatever line style you want to use and just be able to present these property lines on a section. So again, that's also a very useful tool. And since the building pads are dividing the topography, then I'm able to just select the topography and again, get the information of, you know, the cut and fill for every uh, lot. And then, you know, being able to show it uh, like that, of course, maybe, you know, on reality, we would have, you know, the ar architecture file linked here and we would be able to actually see how the buildings are you know sitting on this section so these are the two um main section tools that we have all right um good with that so i think that's most of the questions from now uh, okay. many good comments about uh, what you're showing pretty fascinated as well <laughs> all right so we are actually just reaching the interesting part <laughs> Um, so yeah, what I want to show over here is, um, you know, let's say that this is the public area of this block, right? And over here, I want to have maybe a, a public building and a park next to it. So that's just my excuse uh, for showing you some other really cool topography tools. So the first one, um, 
you know, I mentioned before that you can use the surface from edge and you can actually edit an existing topography. But what I'm going to do actually prior to using the surface from edge edit existing, I'm going to go to maybe a plan view, just look at it from the top. And I'm actually going to slice this surface over here right now. And the reason for that is, you know, when you cut a topography, Revit doesn't let you place points outside of it, outside of the boundary you created, right? So using environment tools, a lot of times um, you, you would like to put points outside of the boundary and then environment would reset the boundary. So in order not to harm anything that we did over here, I'm actually going to slice this surface um, and to just, you know, I'm gonna do it with a regular line. Forgive me for that. I'm just gonna slice this surface over here. So um, then my area over here would be separate and they would not affect one another. And now I'm gonna show you how to edit an existing surface using the surface from edge tool over here. So basically the surface from edge does whatever it promises to do. It inserts um, uh, elevation points to the topo surface through edges that you touch. So the nice thing about this tool is that you can select linked files. You can select linked, fi uh, linked CAD files. Uh, you can select floors, roofs, basically any model edge that you have, you can select. And what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to give it an offset of 10 centimeters. So it will be under my floor. So let's select one surface, one edge over here. And you can see immediately um, what environment does. It just adds all the elevation points over here. And you can see that the surface has changed. So um, after I designed um, this road that I have over here, um, I can make the surface fit to this design. Um, one second. So let's see how I'm doing it. But I actually, uh, I actually missed a step. So I will show you. I will show you how it's going to be finished, and then uh, we will go back again, and I will show you how I created uh, the ramp over here. So one second. Let's just finish this one. All right. Um, and then I could, uh, I could also select the ramp. If I use the chain option, then it will be a lot easier to just select the entire uh, edge. And you can see that it asks me to reset the boundary right now, because um, I think, yeah, over here, you can see in the edge, I have an, a point that's outside the boundary. So going to reset the boundary, it will actually make me have to cut it all over again. Um, but you know that's that's us, you know, obeying the Revit rule of of topography boundaries. So let's just click apply, and um, you can see if I turn on the edit surface again, environment just added these points ten centimeters under the surfaces that I have created. Um, but I'm going to Control Z, and what I'm also going to show you is how I was able to create this, um, this ramp and you know, to have it, you know, to control the slope and to control uh, how it goes. So um, let me turn on these model lines that I have over here, All right? And I would delete them and just repeat the process. So I, I don't know if you ha we have uh, a lot more time, but it, I would just have to show it quickly. So um, a lot of times when we talk about modeling landscape, we like to model um, every part of the landscape, every element separately. And a lot of times we use topographies as reference, you know, for example, when draping a slab on top of topography, because topography makes it a lot easier for me to control the slopes and edit them. Mm -hmm. so, so, well, if so, I wanted something to, that, uh, yeah. sorry, something that you, uh, I've learned from you and uh, from others in landscape is that uh, subregions are not very good, like to create roads and stuff like that. And you have to use other model uh, elements 
so it's easier to schedule it's easier to control easier to model all of that right exactly it's not mm. only that sub sub regions um they change a little bit the accuracy of the topography but also again topography you know it, it's linked it's it's a big thing so if you use one mm. big topography every change you make in one area it would definitely affect on other areas mm. so splitting it into uh separate surfaces really allows me a lot more control over the end result um so let's just go ahead and reset these shapes and what i'm going to do is i'm going to hide this main surface and and the surface that you just show was again it was my starting point surface so i have it that's fine all right let's move on and, and get back to it right so i'm going to use surface from edge again i'm going to create a new topography and this topography is not for scheduling it's simply to help me understand how i want to design uh, the elevations and gradings so over here i'm going to use zero elevation and let's go to 3d so i want my ramp to go from this piece of floor uh, let's say to um, this walkway over here right so let's select a few of the edges. Oh, sorry for that. Uh, by the way, you can click again on an edge to cancel. So that's pretty convenient. You can regret at any point. Um, all right. So let's go to a plan view over here. Again, let me hide this topography. And if I go to wireframe, you can see that basically I already know the the slopes and elevations that i i want to have on this ramp or on this path right so let's go ahead and go to messing inside contour labels and just take a look at what are the elevations that we have here by the way really nice thing about contour labels that you can actually only label the primary contours so if you don't want to have too much information all at once you could just do it like that all right, so my problem here, before I use shape by topography, is that in order to plan the grades and the slopes correctly, I want the contour lines to go along the path in such a way that the slope would remain consistent throughout uh, the surface, right? So I'm going to use this surface in order to understand what are the elevations that I want to have. And let's say that I want to, I want to change the uh, three, 56, right? I'm going to use model lines as reference um, elements. They're also, uh, you can see I have a line style called uh, helpline, right? Um, yeah, just turn this off. And then I'm simply going to um, draw these lines. Sorry for that. They're hidden. Let me unhide. I'm going to draw these lines as if I'm just drawing my contour line. So 365, I want it to be here. And then 355, I want it to be here. And then this one, I want it to be, you know, uh, parallel to, um, um, to the path over here. And I'm going to go to set elevation. This tool allows you to change the elevation of model lines, right? If we go to 3D view, um, you can see that that's where my model lines are. And that's not helpful at all, right? I want to have them at the correct elevation. So let's go and hit uh, 365, uh, 356, enter, increment of one meter, and click on set elevation. You know what? Let's start from the bottom, 54, and just go ahead and set the elevation for these lines. Let's go back to 3D view. And oh, one second, I didn't click the set elevation button. So once I click one, you can see that this changed, right? So I'm simply um, changing them one by one in an increment. And you can see where they are right now. And now I can either uh, select the lines and use the uh, surface from edge tool or I can use the add to surface tool, which basically is going to add these lines into my uh, topography. So let's go ahead and see the edit surface. You can see all the points added to these contour lines. 
And that's where I can actually use the insert midpoint tool again. And to just be able to smooth these um, jittery lines over here. So make sure you're on a point and then move the slider until you have, you know, the correct, um, the correct angle that you want to use. And just going to do it like that. So I'm going to click finish, even though I would go on and refine this topography. If, you know, if this wasn't a live video, I would go on to refine this entire topography. And you can see over here, I actually just want to uh, make it a little bit bigger so it would cover uh, my entire path. All right. And to wrap it up, I'm just going to select my surface and select my floor. That's a flat floor. And just go and use shape by topography. This is basically going to, again, um, uh, automate the modify sub element process. And it would just drape this path um, on top of my topography, you can see how it happens. So the, the, the amount of time it's going to take, it really depends on the size and complexity of the surface, but within the shape by topography command, you definitely have an option to simplify the edges and receive less elevation points on the edges of your, um, floor. You can also, um, tell, uh, environment to to place the floor a little bit above or under the top of surface. So it's a very flexible tool. You can do it again and again and again. And what I like to do is I actually like to keep these uh, surfaces in my file. I, as you saw before, I use a dedicated filter to just hide these surfaces because it really allows me to go back and re-edit it if I need to. So, a lot of times I also give a name to the surface so I would be able to recognize it. And then the, um, you know, the help lines, I can hide them by category. And then, you know, that's the result that we saw before. So, you know, the design and the modeling technology are really tied together. So the way the designers think that's, that's what made us create the tools just the way we did. And then, you know, finally, I would just do what I did before, use the surface from edge, um, you know, edit existing to just be able to connect this topo surface with the path that I, I planned. So just like landscape planning, when you have an area, first you create, you know, the flat geometry the main geometry, I would say. Then you design uh, the slopes and elevation of it. And then you just design, you know, everything that's around it. Um, so, I mean, if there's any questions, I have a lot more to show. So uh, feel free to, you know, pause me whenever, uh, you know, yeah, well, something that I wanted to add, it's true that typically in Revit, we would model the topo surface and then we would adapt the shape of the road and sidewalk to it. But in theory, it's kind of the opposite. Like you, you have a sidewalk that follows a certain slope and then you kind of fill in with the land, especially if you uh, modify the, uh, the, uh, the site, right? So, I mean, you're, you're saying that I have um, a, a path that follows a slope, but... Um, if it's an existing path, then yes. But if mm -hmm. it's proposed, then someone uh, designed it, which uh, hopefully will be the, the the landscape designer. So, in 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 the design process for me, whenever I start to think of a site, I start to think of you know the geometry and the slopes together. So I kind of create the the main geometry. And when I was using CAD, you know, I had I had to plan everything together. But um, now that I'm using Revit, my on paper design phase just includes, you know, the basic geometries. But then um, to be able to understand the surface, that's where I'm actually using Revit. Um, so it, it's a lot easier for me to look at my design. For example, I can place, you know, contour lines on this slab and 
and understand, you know, my elevations and, and how everything connects and take a look at it from up, right? So now we already have this these shape that we can go ahead and, and, and work with, right? We can create these lines, but now I can understand my site. I can see that the contour lines are connecting in, in such a loop. So mm-hmm. working in, t- in 2D, I, I would not, it would take me a long longer time to just be able to understand the three-dimensional structure mm-hmm. of my site and just yeah. working so it, with this. So yeah. it helps you uh, to create the design, not just to document it because you have exactly. um, more information. Yeah, and exactly. creating something like this where you have a pad that is, you know, a little different from the surrounding uh, topo surface, so it makes more sense uh, in terms of construction. It it's pretty hard <laughs> with the default uh, Revit features. Um, yes. All right. To add, I think we should uh, take a, a couple of questions. Somebody mentioned the uh, um, the new topo tool from the next version of Revit. Do, do you know about it? Um. Yes, um, I think that they're going to have a more sophisticated topography tool. Um, I'm not sure yet exactly what it will do. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, whatever it is, I hope it will be beneficial for landscape uh, design. Um, and then, you know, we will re- react to it accordingly. Um, so ho- hopefully, hopefully it will be good. But there's, yeah. All right. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, the tunnel question. I don't. I don't remember if we answered that last time. Each time I have a live about uh, landscape, the, the tunnel question comes up. Tunnel, like how to create a tunnel within the topography. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, with the building pad, it cuts, you know, the the top, but. How can you have a topo surface above, like part of a building, for example? Um, so actually, by using whenever floors. I'm I'm going, yeah. So whenever I'm going to construction phase and I want to show something that's pretty real, I would m- much rather use uh, floors or roofs instead of topographies, um, because you know it's easier to get a volume of material when um, you use such an element. So I actually have a really nice um, example of that over here. But let's just hope that Revit will be kind. And um, let me open up another file because I didn't want to, uh, to open up too much files all at once. Um, but Let's do cancel. Sorry, I think I opened it in two screens all at once. So yeah. Um, so we did something similar over here, and I can show you that. Um, let's just lock all my links. That will make it easier. And yeah, I will apologize for my computer <laughs> if it will crash. I made it work so hard today. So yeah, this is the uh, example. Let me show you this in wireframe. The situation that we have here is basically, this is the architecture link. It's an underground uh, parking structure that goes you know, under all this beautiful terrain. And uh, basically in this example, I have a, a topo surface that covers it, but actually I would have to you know, cut this part of the top of surface that's above, um, you know, above the parking lot. But if I hide the surface, you can see that um, this is basically a roof that I created uh, with a variable material. And then I used the shape by topography tool to just make the roof align with the surface that's above the underground structure. So I was able to get, you know, the exact geometry and understand the exact volume of materials that I need to peel to feel above my underground structure. So I hope that answers the question. Um, using a roof or, or a floor with a variable material, I guess. Yeah, that's, I, I think that does. 
I mean, that's that's pretty interesting using roofs with uh, variable material. I didn't think of that workflow. Um, yeah, I have to give credit to Ilya, our CEO. He's, uh, he's my Revit teacher, but I think he's um, a Revit psychologist. So whenever <laughs> Revit refuses to do something or does something really bad and you have no idea how to solve it, he just sits in front of the computer and goes like, hmm, all right, that's why. So he's a Revit therapist, right? But for the software, not for the users. Um, so a, a lot of these tips, you know, came from, from learning from him. Uh, yeah, uh, all right, Pre really interesting workflow. Let's see, one more question. I think we went through most of it. If you have final questions, time to let us know in the chat, else we're slowly go coming to an end with this session. I really want to show an, a last feature. All, all right, go for it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just can't, I can't. Go for uh, it. It's, it's a really cool one and it's just going to be very short. But um, the, the the next thing I would do if I, if this was a real design, then I would I would want to like smooth out these contour lines, right? So I already showed you how you can draw model lines and add them to a surface. But now I'm going to show you a technique on how to draw a model line in a very specific elevation. So I'm going to use this snap to work plane tool. And I'm basically going to select any point in my model and automatically I have this uh, reference plane and that's also you know a design aid because it shows me I selected a specific elevation and it shows me what's above it and what's under it and now I can create my um, you know uh, contour lines let's just use uh, something like that I can use the spline to create really, really, really beautiful contour lines that would be in the correct elevation that I want them to be. So I wouldn't have to use, you know, the set elevation tool. I can immediately locate um, this line wherever I want. So let's do it again. I'm going to select a specific point, let's say over here. Once I touched it, I have... Um, I have this reference place uh, plane in place. I can use this spline tool because it's my favorite. And I could just create this beautiful spline and I know exactly where I want to connect it to. So again, if I were um, a landscape architecture student all over again, you know, that's what I wish I would have. So just show you the last one. We're not gonna go through the entire example, but created a work plane, going, selecting a spline, and then just, you know, drawing whatever you want, you know, the topography to be. And click escape twice. And you can see that we have um, these model lines right in place. And all I have to do is to select these lines and add them to the surface. Oops, sorry, I had to select the surface as well. So I'm gonna add them to the surface and then environment is gonna add all the elevation points uh, along these lines. So let's go edit surface and you can see that these points were added. So that was just, you know, the final smoothing uh, tool that I wanted to show. I, I had to show this tool, I really, really like it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love it too, because basically in Revit, either you import from CAD or you manually add the points, right? Are there yeah. other workflows, the default workflows? And then with this um, tool, like the sky's the limit, you can draw your own model lines or you can <laughs> pick, uh, acquire the, the slope from other elements. So really see many possible workflows. Um. Yeah, and and I have to uh, say one last thing is that um, mm -hmm. we're actually going to in the next release uh, we're going to revolutionize um, <clears throat> the the topography editing tools, and this is you know just a, a test plugin that we created to preview how it's going to look like. But basically, instead of having to go back and forth to messing inside edit topography and then go to all the tools, you would have everything in one place plus some really new and exciting ones. So a lot to look forward to. Um, 
the one that I could show right now is the add face. So you would basically be able uh, to select any face. So this is a roof, for example. Um, I can simply select it and then you know define how many, how much accuracy I want to have, how many elevation points, and you know just add it to add it to a specific topography or just create a new one. So this is really test data version, but it, um, it's going to be really interesting and it's going to make this entire design process a lot more convenient. So. Um, Hopefully this will be released um, this February. So a lot to look forward to. Yes, for sure. Looking forward to it. Well, yeah, some people already mentioned part three. So each time you all uh, blow our mind with the new features and the new workflows. So we'll have to do another session at some point once again. Um, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to it. I have a lot of ideas of mm -hmm. what to talk about. So, and, and definitely if there's someone, you know, out there listening and there is a specific situation or strategy that he would like to learn about or understand how to do it, then, um, you know, you can definitely go on our website and, um, you have the contact us. So we read every email. Um, so don't be shy. Um, we love receiving examples from people and customers. Um, and, and I think also you can mention the promotion uh, code. Yeah, I have it right here. Code is Revit Pure all in one word. Is that right? Yes. Okay. It's on my screen and it's 10% uh, off until the end of February. I also get, get that right. Yeah. So okay, once great. you purchase environment, you can just insert um, the the promotion code upon purchase. So for all February, um, we hope you liked it. At uh, archintelligence.com. So make sure to have a look at the plugin. You know what? Let's take. <laughs> yeah, funny question from you, Brenda. Ask: Does the Rivet therapist give classes online? Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good name. I don't know if that exists already. The Rivet therapist. <laughs> um, I, I can definitely ask him, but, um, currently the way we work is that he teaches me everything. Um, I have to admit, I sometimes feel like a Muppet, right? Mm -hmm. So he's like, no, 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 no. The correct way of doing it is this and that and that. So, um, but one time, yes, he will have to, uh, give <laughs> classes, but until then you would have to do with the second version. Well, you're a, gr a great teacher, so uh, that's working great. And I, I think let, let's go for a last question from uh, Yvonne Wesk. So what is your process to schedule material added or taken from a topography? Well, that's kind of what you showed earlier on with the building pads, right? Um, so. Yes, but going forward, if I would like, again, for construction documents and for more accurate, I would definitely replace most of these topographies with uh, floors and you know even working on these building pads I'm simply using them for the design process but um, the truth is that the building would probably be somewhere here and then these elevation points would have to have a certain slope so following you know the preliminary design with the building plates i would definitely create a floor with an opening over here and would give it you know because the slopes has to go you know like that around the building and into the road so um there's always a thing with revit do not over detail but when you have to detail um there's always a way to just build up on the process uh Sounds good. Somebody asks you if you have a Twitter account. Yes, but I'm never on it. Okay. <laughs> I'm more of a LinkedIn person, though. Um, mm -hmm. If you reach out on LinkedIn, I'll definitely uh, answer. Yeah, usually more activity on, on LinkedIn from what I saw. All right, so that's it uh, for questions. Next episode will be next week, next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time with Pervy Irwin. And we'll be talking about areas, everything um, about areas. It's the second time Pervy comes to the show. The first one, she uh, blew my mind with her tricks about schedules that I've started to implement in my daily Revit practice. So I'm expecting uh, great things for this episode as well. 
So make sure to tune in next week, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, back to you, Nehama. So any final word, anything else you wanted to mention? Um, no, follow us on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. Um, with um, We try to um, have a lot of YouTubes over there. It's not as successful as yours, but... Um, It's What's the name of the channel? It's Arc. Uh, it's Arc Intelligence. In Intelligence. Yes, mm -hmm. just um, look for it, and you can also reach it, reach it from our website. Uh, we also have a newsletter, so whenever we figure out this a new workflow or a new method of doing stuff, uh, we definitely write it up in our newsletter and in our mm -hmm. news section in the website. So if you're into it, you can sign up uh, to our newsletter. And we try to keep it, you know, very useful and nothing, we never hassle, we never use it as a way to, you know, bug people. Just, we make sure it's useful and interesting. All right, that sounds good. So thank you so much uh, once again, that, that was super interesting. Uh, you're a great teacher and I hope to have a third session with you at some point. Yeah, me too. I really enjoy So thank you, Nehama. Thanks, everybody. See you next week uh, for the evening session with Purvi. So goodbye. Bye.